Hello, hello, welcome back to the stream. I'm Jun Chan, and today we're back doing some common ads, um, specifically graph common ads uh, in PureScript. And that's basically something that we've done, um, sort of copying some things that we saw in the Haskell ecosystem with the FGL library and uh, a PureScript port of it. And uh, what we've been working on last time on stream is doing the equivalent thing for the Alga library. So we've uh, built some tests and some more tests, and we were in the process of implementing undirected graphs since I was basically um, trying to reproduce that same um, uh, that same graph here and considering that those edges were undirected because just for simplification sake so that we build the the, uh, the common ad on the undirected, undirected graph and then we take on the um, maybe slightly more um, um, yeah slightly more uh, demanding uh, directed graph common ad so let's take a look at where we were, we apparently installed self course. And what do our tests say so far? Uh, ah, we are. Oh, there's safe course and prim course. Oh, we maybe have a version of safe course that's too advanced and that requires prim course that we don't have. Um, Okay, I suppose we could try and upgrade uh, locally to PureScript 14. Um, mm, ah, yeah, because I did get safe course. Let's see if there was a version of safe course that existed before uh, PureScript 14 or not. And uh, 014. Mm, prim course coercible. I get the feeling I depend on unsafe course. So, okay, let's uh, take a look at it at different moments in time. Let's see package JSON here, pop 12. Um, that, this doesn't depend on unsafe course here. Um, does it depend on prim course? It does. Okay, so let's go further into further backward in time. And here we don't see that it depends on unsafe course, at least in the dependencies. And yeah, we depend on unsafe course and prim course. Okay, so let's just make sure that uh, indeed. Um, Prim course is a PureScript 14 thing. Prim course. Uh, we can't go back in time here, unfortunately, and that's uh, it's not great. Automatically solve type for course inside the have probable identical runtime with PureScript safe course. Okay, well, uh, do we want those things hard enough? Um, could we just use unsafe course instead? Highly unsafe. And we'll test not like just unsafe course from foot to bar. But we don't know. So here we are, are coercing foos and yeah, therefore being able to map, pattern match on bar, but we're not we're not automatic automatically removing the um, type annotation like uh, like uh, this seems to be doing for us like x string to string is a pretty cool coursing okay well let's uh let's try and move this to plus script 14 and let me try and remember 
where we had, well, maybe I just uh, find name, I think, shell.mix here, and I think it's uh, like so. And okay, we have one here, and pairing. So more pure script pairing, shell.mix, indeed, that's the one. So let's uh, copy that one to uh, pure script Arga. And then uh, in pure script Arga, let's uh, mix shell. And I think we, mix, we need to mix shell. And then uh, pure script is 0 014. And then we need to upgrade our packages. Uh, upgrade uh, packages. Upgrade set. And spec test. And we just need to add. Uh, ah, folds don't exist in the package set. Is that so? Okay, that's strange. Um, new script folds, I suppose, in all GitHub. And uh, oh, it's archived. Okay, well, let's uh, add it manually. So I think with uh, false equals to something similar to this, where we say path 31. And you know what, safe course might actually be in package set now. So we'll attempt it. And five to zero and depending on control for functor and ordered collections. And unsafe core seems to indeed be in the new package set, which makes sense. And we are we off to compiling. And directive doesn't compile yet. And that will be about course working. And course prime, what is course prime? Oh, right. I've, uh, yeah, using type uh, types to try and make things work. But control fault doesn't work because of some probably. Hmm. Well, applying a function unfold fault. Okay, well, let's see whether faults have been forked. And they have an open community. Great, so let's go fetch that one instead. And that's 630. And that's in pure script open community. And control fold now compiles and we have warnings and then it's we're back to our error in undirected and it's about structure equality and again basically that uh, that same type error that we had so let's see do we in fact so we're trying to coerce in the way that uh, Haskell does it. Um, but 
yeah clearly there's something else going on here uh, because we're expecting something of this complex type and i don't see where we would get that type from so let's see let's go back into the uh haskell code that we had oh and i think is it the case that we didn't have structural equality everywhere oh a spammer again and it's banned uh for d for d we have um and structural equality i think uh, was something new that was coming from here oh hold on am i using the same am i using the same uh trick for 4g and that i just copy pasted the code uh a little bit uh, blindly uh 4g mm. chorus g4g yeah i think i definitely did okay so let's see let's just try this then okay that works apparently and then test and then very chorus prime indeed uh structure equality that should just be chorus and still not good Um, okay, why not? Um, maybe this is just this. Function graph. Structural equality in QA takes a graph. Supposedly, inside these graphs, we have G graphs. And so we should be able to G structural equality on those. Well, why wouldn't that work? Hold on. I mean, this seems like it's, is it the same error? Hold on, 135. No, no, it's not. Okay. we bump to a new error but um we don't have uh we don't have a pure script id working correctly so let's uh reload the window um hmm. hopefully maybe getting better types oh we need to select the next environment that is very true and therefore, uh, reload after that. I'm surprised it didn't ask, but uh, let's actually reselect here. And then it should tell us to reload, yes. And come on, give us the proper error. Still version mismatch uh, with uh, some of the stuff in output. So that's probably fine. We just need to delete and then a spag will build again. I think doing a build project here would have also worked. And then either we just work or we just restart the IDE. Okay, looking good and let's try and um, restart the ID and maybe save yes excellent so I think we can chorus that or maybe not
maybe we need to compose. Maybe we need to build these um, higher order courses. Mm, the course for G, I mean, maybe that it didn't work. Uh, it could be an illusion that this is type checking where it's probably not. Um, Okay, well, let's just uh, UG, let's just do it in the old fashioned way. I think then we just need to pattern match. I don't quite dislike this, but here we go. And UG, that type checks. And where are we? It's a variable A undefined. Okay. Uh huh. And then our two graph instance is not correct. Oh yeah, that's because that would not be a record. There would be composition. Okay. And yes, indeed, for G, it does not work. Uh, but let's try with this crazy uh, type annotation and see if it works for us. And. Um, it was where here so let's try that uh, okay and i think we said close prime and yeah of course i think we need to not have this, but the course needs a contravariant. Instance that is a little bit unexpected. Let's look at 4G from here. Make sure we have same type signature we do and is it the same type signature and then here it is And uh, yeah, we should have G graph and graph properly aligned here. But now you're saying you want a contravariant instance for course. For the function instance, because you're trying to, because I suppose this is a function and it's in a negative position. Is that what's going on? Hmm. I mean, there's lots of function instances here. It's not clear which one's not working. Okay. Well, I think chorus is not our friend here. And we'll probably just need to um, do it manually again. So let's try that instead. And uh, how would it work? E, V, O, C will indeed be the same, but Go will pattern match on a GMT and G vertex, um, G overlay, and uh, G connect. I think I've started doing that before, and they're going to be, uh, however, inside a UG.
right. I think we need some more parentheses here. Um, and an, in a UG, oh, in a UG. Hmm. Yeah, actually, I think maybe that's what I wasn't doing correctly last time. Maybe I should, yeah, I should take the overlay and consider, I need to pass it to go. Yeah, actually, I don't need the, uh, I don't think these intermediary ones to pattern match um, on connected and overlay. I just need the leaves to properly be handled, I think. Uh, let's save and you don't know overlay oh right yeah okay yeah i'm being a little bit confused here i think um so let's indeed there's only overlays for these uh which means that I don't have the right uh, graph type, so how does this work? Um, right, go apply to X. It's not going to work, so we just need to apply to UGX, I think. Yeah, that sounds correct actually. And then we just probably need to do something similar in the vertices. Um, has vertex expects a graph, so we need to do a UG Y here. And then G being a graph, we need to probably pattern match it to a um, hit. Uh, That sounds fine to me. Or it's just maybe this data type, we need to define a local one maybe. Is that what's going on? Uh, uh, miss. Or is this just locally defined and it's all, all good? Okay, let's uh, search for miss equals miss. Yeah, no, there's a hit. Um, that's in algebra graph internal. Repash123, thanks a lot for the follow and welcome to the stream. Do you do some pure script yourself? Uh, so can I reuse the data type or do I need to create another internal? Hmm. Not sure. But this is not really about, uh, it's not really about uh, edge and miss and, and the hit data type here. It's really about graphs. So, G is a graph, and so when we hit, we get these graphs, but S is an A, which is fine. 
and then this overlay though ah yeah yeah we need to pass if we call U ug recursively then we need to pass ug uh, like so in and same here and that looked for a second like it would be a fine but it's not um, ah case hit ug x as well that's uh, that's the missing piece I think okay yeah I mean the tech checker hasn't been helping us much here but uh, okay induce uh, what is going on with induce induced subgraph giving a graph okay so we take a predicate and we try to apply 4g to whatever by passing it this g vertex thing and we use this k function that um, Mm -hmm. Right, it does this pattern matching, but yeah, I think what I did here is that I um, I simply added g dot in front of the uh, graph constructors, but that's obviously not sufficient. Um, and this 4G, I think, is R4G, so that's fine. So R4G takes, um, well, it takes this, uh, functions there and a graph. And we uh, just partially apply it, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, I think some of it's going to lie in the K here. And when we pass this K, there's a good chance we'll be pattern matching on, um, I will want to return maybe a UGX. Let's start with that. And could be that we return a UGX and a UGY. No. So maybe it's not that. Uh, we'll have to work out the type of K. So K takes, well, what seems like a, uh, what is a b2b2b to B, but really it's a g dot graph a to g dot graph a to a g dot graph a which is also the type of connect and that's our first um, function and then it takes well apparently it takes what looks like a graph a and a graph a think or g dot graph a and a g dot graph a and what do we think it needs to return well to apply to 4g if you want to return a graph a then it's possible that we wanted to return a graph a here so let's see whether that works or not and okay well that's clearly not fine but yeah i think i think it uh, it's credible so indeed in that case i do need to do this like i started doing and then probably this also needs that but in this case maybe i simply need to return a UG of the whole thing instead of what I did earlier but if I do that then I think that's the same uh, 
my message, is it? Uh, let's uh, see for a second, because now my f, I mean, my k returns a graph, that's true, but my f, yeah, my f actually continues to take uh, a g graph, so the x and the y are g graphs, so it should work. Um, Uh, it could be it's this shenanigan that uh, that is breaking things too. Uh, let's get the type of folder around because it's such a mouthful that it will probably help. Okay, let's get it here. Already? Ah, yeah. So let me remap some keyboard shortcuts for a sec here because I've been progressively remapping some stuff. So there's the control P. How is this guy called already? Uh, control shift P. Um, can I sort by key binding? No. Um, okay, I was doing the uh, commenting. So let's start with that. And toggle line comment will be alt instead and then um how is this thing called view um, run no not terminal panel what is it called um Go to file, it's not this. Oh, palette, palette, no? Command palette, there we go, control should be. Okay, palette. And, uh, okay. So it's not there. Command, command palette, control shift P. Control commands. So we're going to do alt shift P. Indeed it is. Okay. So back to uh, our actual problem. Um, so for G, it is crazy thing. So the B is the G empty. Okay. So it means that our return type is going to be uh, G graph. Um, that sounds suspicious because we want a graph. So we already have a problem here, which is that really it needs to be this. And then now we have an actual graph A here, uh, yeah. And then we have a graph A here, which is pretty much, oh, I think, what we what we are expecting. And then we need to replace all of our Bs by a graph A. And so we shall do so equational reasoning to the rescue. And here we have the two types uh, that we wanted for Ks. Um, yeah, K G overlay is graph to graph to graph, or actually G graph to G graph to graph. Hey, Captain Callback. Hey, I like your name. Welcome to the stream. Uh, how is your day going? Um, I was actually, before I started streaming, I was actually doing some uh, some JavaScript and uh, uh, using uh, the tech from the hyper uh, hypercore protocol family, and I was reminded how much callback there is in JavaScript in vanilla JavaScript land. Um, I mean, some of these uh, some of these are have the AC await uh, also formulation to do um, like uh, the slightly nicer syntax. But uh, oh boy, so many, so many callbacks. Uh, okay, so um, so then we know that our uh, this function needs to be a to graph a as well, and so clearly we're going to need to have ug here, and we're going to need to have ug here as well. All right, and. Where does that leave us? And then well, we're going to need to parenthesize this. 
Hey, Captain Callback. You're very welcome. Oh, that's really appreciated. Um, really happy uh, that you like it. I'm very curious about what you like about it. This way, maybe I can do more of it uh, for, for you and maybe others. Uh, do you do pure script yourself? So maybe, um, so maybe I don't have the full picture here for the KG overlay because, okay, that makes sense that now I'm returning, I have an A to graph A function here, but do I have a graph A to graph A to graph A function? I don't, right? Because I know I clearly don't because um, it's fine if my K takes G graph says, but I need to have graph A and graph A here. And if that's the case, then, um, then what? Then, well, it's okay that I have G overlay because that's a G graph A, G graph A, G graph A, and so that's all good. But then I need to pattern match on the UG here in order to be able to apply, uh, apply things that make sense, I think. And then probably same thing here. All right. No, actually, we haven't heard of it before. All right. What is the general use case for it? Uh, do you mean uh, pure script uh, or um, um, yeah, maybe you, you probably mean pure script because that's the language I'm using right now. And uh, and yeah, it's not super um, you know super well known around here. And if you need to the stream, maybe the, the stream, maybe I should uh, uh, tell you what I'm what I'm up to. Yeah, pure script. Where it's traditionally being used, it's mostly used in the uh, on the front end side of things, um, in places where I suppose it's very close to a TypeScript. But the difference uh, between TypeScript and uh, PureScript is that you could argue that TypeScript is types for JavaScript, but it's kind of bolted on a little bit as an afterthought because vanilla JavaScript doesn't really uh, do things like type checking. And so TypeScript, I don't know if you've used TypeScript or not. Like, let me know if you've used TypeScript or not, because that will help me uh, make sure that you, I can pitch you uh, PureScript in the in the right way. And also, I think I had like a little white PureScript. I, I do have a white PureScript here. So I'm just going to copy that. Yeah, you do know PureScript, Pure excellent. Uh, TypeScript, I mean. So uh, TypeScript, uh, yeah, just to tell you that it is a kind of a little bit of a Bolt, bolted on afterthought. Are oh, you a big fan? Excellent. Yeah, I'm a big fan too. And so there's uh, there's something in TypeScript in the TypeScript ecosystem that is called uh, TSFP and or FPTS actually. And uh, yeah, that's actually something that sits a little bit in between the worlds of PureScript and other strongly typed functional languages like Haskell, PureScript, and Scala and TypeScript. And uh, so if you're interested in like having some like gateway, dr gateway uh, drug, so to speak, um, that's, that's a good place to start because that's really TypeScript, but it uses all of the arguably more powerful abstractions that you find in languages that actually are built from the ground up with uh, strong types in mind, like Haskell and like PureScript. So Haskell and PureScript are in kind of the same family and Scala is, uh, doing like similar things, but a very, very different syntax and Scala runs on the JDM. So um, the little spiel that I wrote about why do I use PureScript uh, is that, well, first of all, like a little description is that PureScript is a strongly typed uh, language. So what does that mean? It means you have types like in TypeScript and then it's a purely functional programming language. And that means that um, there's this kind of careful distinction about things that are pure mathematical functions from things that are actually more like uh, procedures in, in programming and specifically things that tend to do things like network calls or database calls or, you know, file system writes. And those things are called uh, effectful um, functions. And there's a this really careful distinctions between pure functions and effectful functions. And the reason why there's this, this distinction is because when you have pure functions, you're really able to reason about your program almost as if it was um, mathematical functions. With Mitchell, you can start doing things that are called equational reasoning, things like basically are uh, refactoring superpowers. And you can 
you know, take a function that's here. If you know it's pure, then you can completely replace it uh, everywhere that you use it by something that's equivalent. And that never fails. Where, whereas if you try something like that in object-oriented programming or, you know, like something like JavaScript, usually you have uh, stateful uh, things and effectful things that will actually break your program when you start to refactor in those ways. So that's the pure side of things. And uh, well, it compiles to JavaScript. So it means that it's mostly used in the front end, but it can be also used with Node.js. Uh, and I've been also using it with Node.js. Actually, right now, I'm actually using the Node.js interpreter. Uh, I'm actually not doing anything that's uh, very uh, front end uh, at this point. And so some of the other, like, High level benefits from it is that yeah, pure, pure functions and immutable data structure basically remove whole classes of, of problems that you can have with your with your languages. And if you've do, done some React, some TypeScript, you've heard about immutable data structures before. And uh, there's a really good compiler. In fact, when you uh, joined the stream, you, you were seeing me battling with the compiler, and I was actually following some of the things that the compiler was telling me about what was wrong with my um, with my program, and I was following the types in order to uh, deal with these complex functions without even necessarily looking deeply into what the functions do. But uh, uh, there's already a large amount of things that you can do just by following compiler error that tell you, no, no, the types don't align. And then there's a good chance that if the types align, then usually your underlying functionality is actually going to be correct. Of course, it happens that it's not, but it's pretty amazing how when types check, actually most often uh, the, co the code is actually doing the correct thing. And uh, you've seen some of that if you've done TypeScript because uh, you have, you have type checks, uh, and so when you're, you know, using the wrong key name for for a JavaScript object, then TypeScript will will yell at you and tell you, no, no, like you must be mistaken. This is not the right type, and so this dialogue with the compiler avoids a whole class of bugs, and it means that you know you're you're more sure that your code is correct because the types are correct. So PureScript definitely does that as well. And then uh, there's this thing with these languages that have been using types, you know, from the ground up, is that really types become a tool to really reason about your program and think about what your code is doing. And uh, that's something that it took me, you know, a few years to kind of wrap my head around it. Um, so it's not, it's something a bit more powerful than what I was just saying now, like, you know, types that are just used to check whether you're using the right key, uh, you know, for, for, for an object or something like that. Those are really simple type checking things that already catch like a number of potential bugs. But uh, there are such types that start to really increase the way that you think about your program and allow you to identify patterns that exist in different places. And you're like, oh, I've seen that pattern before. And, and uh, when you go in that realm, usually it's, uh, it's connected to a kind of uh, a kind of thinking that is a little bit mathematical again, where you're starting to have these patterns. They actually offer you some guarantees. Like for instance, there's the a pattern that's uh, often used, which is uh, the monoid pattern. It's sorry, it's a mathematical term, but it's basically things that can be appended together. And in that, you can say, well, strings can be appended, right? You can concatenate two strings, and uh, it's associative. So if you append uh, append two strings and then append that to another string or if you um, append uh, the first string together with the, the two other strings then it's the same it's going to give you the same result so you have these scary words uh, if you're not uh, mathematically inclined like associativity that happen to be mathematical ma mathematical laws for monoids and then you have the same laws for integers for instance uh, and there's a sum monoid where if you add two and three uh, that's a monoid uh, and, and so all of a sudden you have this pattern where wow concatenation of strings is kind of like the same abstract pattern as adding two uh, integers and so that's where types can uh, help you uh, reason about your code better and those patterns really end up uh, kind of delivering on the promise of reusability. Uh, you know, there's this thing in object-oriented programming where folks say, well, you know, you can make your code reusable and you have these very complex code bases with complex class hierarchies and so on. And people try to build them in ways that are reusable. But uh, people that are way more experienced than me in functional programming tend to say that, you know, they've tried that, but it really didn't work because the reusability 
approach to object-oriented programming is all wrong, you know, in quotes, and that actually the proper delivery of, re of reusability actually occurs when you start identifying more of these more mathematical patterns like more like a monoid like things that can be appended together and then all of a sudden you use that, that new knowledge to to talk about to talk about your programs and that make these concepts strongly reusable and there's much more advanced complex that uh, advanced concepts that uh, tie into this um, concept like monoids and those really make uh, not just the programs reusable, but the, the whole way of thinking about your programs reusable. And that's really cool. And then refactoring is really an uh, incredible superpower with, uh, with functional programming. Uh, you can, uh, it's really with the type checker, and that's also true with TypeScript. When you have a good code base and everything is tight, then you're a little bit uh, you know, uh, less fearful when you start to move big chunk of, of code or, you know, take, uh, uh, remove something underneath your code to replace it by something completely new. If your types are, 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 are checking, then you have at least uh, some warm and fuzzy feeling that, you know, you haven't broken everything and that actually it, it, it might work. Um, that's true, but uh, you'll find that it's true up to a certain limit when you don't use these deeper abstractions. Uh, like monads in particular, which are really useful to separate. And I, I'm saying monad here that are not monoids. Uh, and the monads are more useful to maybe separate things that are effectful than things that are not. It's a very, it's an oversimplification, but I think as a beginner, that's kind of how I was thinking about it first. And yeah, it works in the browser and in Node. And so it means that you can have programs that work together well for the front end and for for like simple prototypes in the back end that don't require like heavy duty perform performance. And so that's why that's why pure script. And um, what we're doing now on the stream is that I'm uh, using this library that does graphs um, and that exists that's a common pattern like there's the libraries that exist in the Haskell ecosystem and pure script is kind of the uh, a small cousin of Haskell and um, some of the, uh, some people take a library that exists in Haskell and port it to PureScript, and that's the case of Alga. And so um, I'm interested in graphs in general and playing with libraries that uh, that manipulate graph and understanding a little bit better what can make libraries that manipulate graphs more performant. Uh, particularly, like how can you you know uh, do things with large graphs without holding everything in memory and things like that. Is it possible to interface uh, graph computation uh, that will operate onto a graph that's in memory on your in your browser uh, together with a graph database where maybe you have a bigger graph? Because I tend to think that you know like lots of things are really augmented when you think about them in graphs. I mean that's the way I think at least. And so I'm playing with graphs and. Uh, I'm using this a little bit as an excuse to implement some th some things that didn't exist yet in the Alga library, in the ports uh, from the Haskell uh, library um, that is uh, somewhere in my, um, somewhere here, yeah, no, oh, <laughs> look at this, data monoid. Um, I was talking about monoids and uh, yeah, I think it's in pure script algebraic graphs, there we go. Alga uh, is actually a uh, uh, a uh, nickname for algebraic graphs, and so I'm going to actually uh, add this here, algebraic graphs. And so uh, part of that library were ported, but there's a number of things that weren't ported. So for instance, um, uh, right now I'm implementing undirected graphs because uh, the graphs in the PureScript Alga library, and I'm going to also open that up right here. That's the that's the code, and I think is it. I think maybe it's not in PureScript yet. No, it's not in the equivalent um, things where there's library. But the source code that would be a nice thing to do actually. Let me uh, let me write it down. Um, at some point, I think when I've implemented undirected graphs, actually, I should. Uh, submit my contributions to uh, pure script Alga, uh, but maybe, ah, oh yeah, maybe afterwards. Then I, I, I think it makes sense to um, 
uh, push it into pursuit, which I've never done before. Uh, but uh, it would be nice to have docs. But I think this part of the ecosystem might be a little bit in transitions, transition right now. I'm not sure if it's possible to do that, but maybe that'd be a good excuse to uh, find out where it's at. Okay, so that's a, that's, that's a, a detour I'm happy to do because, uh, of course, uh, I'm... Uh, it's easier to pay attention to what uh, my viewers are doing when I have a, a small number of them. Uh, all right, so let's uh, get back to it though. And um, I hope that explains things. And I don't know if you're still around, Captain Callback, but um, it's always good to have these things. And I'm also recording those and putting them on YouTube. So uh, maybe one day I will, uh, you know, take that and uh, make it into why I like script. You're still around, excellent. A lot to do for me. Uh, oh yeah, these to-do lists. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. Uh, if you could see the number of uh, open such uh, little items that I've done for myself, you know, sometimes it's aspirational, but um, but I like to write them. You know, who knows? One day uh, maybe I won't be alone trying to um, trying to uh, check those boxes. Uh, and I don't have infinite time to check them, but, uh, but you know, I have time. All right, uh, let's uh, continue following the types here. When I have little wiggly things, uh, it's obviously the same as uh, when you have wiggly things uh, for TypeScript. Okay, so here now I know that I have an F that we don't care about in those two first cases, because that's what this uh, underscore means. And then I know that the type, uh, so this is a type signature, by the way, uh, which is a little bit like a type signature uh, in pure script. Um, so induce uh, is a pretty, well, let's say transpose is a little bit simpler. It takes a graph and this little arrow thing says it means it, it returns a graph A. But then it can be so that you have, for instance, something like that, which says that this function takes an A and it takes another A. So basically it's a function of two arguments. Oh no, wait, it takes another graph A. So it's a function of three arguments and it returns a graph A. So this is the equivalent of a function of A comma A comma a graph of A returning a graph of A. Um, so that's a nice uh, little sort of a regular uh, um, notation for types in PureScript and just happens to be the same for Haskell as well. So induce here is something that actually takes like a parenthesis of A to Boolean and a graph A and returns a graph A. So what does it mean when we take a parenthesis? Well, it means that we, it actually takes a function from A to Boolean and a graph A and it returns a graph A. And so uh, that function from A to Boolean is called P here. It's called P because that's a function from A to Boolean. It's actually a fairly well-known um, pattern it's what's called a, pred a predicate. So basically, this is something that, well, you construct the induced subgraph, a given graph, by removing the vertices that do not satisfy a given predicate. So we're going to be running this. Like, let's say we have a graph that has a, a node uh, that's uh, A and a node that's B. And we pass it a predicate that says the, uh, the node needs to be equal to A. And then uh, if we run induce with that predicate on our graph, then we're going to end up with a node that only has A inside and because the B doesn't satisfy the predicate. So that's what induces. And I don't know about the name of that function, to be honest, by the way. Um, is it the same name in uh, Arga? Induce, whoopsie. My, uh, uh, my muscle memory is wrong. Yeah, induced subgraph. So it could be, that's a mathematical, that's a term that's uh, accepted in math. Or it's not, uh, but uh, I'll accept it uh, temporarily for now. Okay, I'll uh, orient things a little bit differently. And uh, now let's uh, think again about the type of this thing. Because now we're trying to return a graph A. Um, knowing that both f and uh, x and y are graph a's, but f actually takes a g graph of a. So we can't pass a graph a here. We need to pass, we need to pattern match on ug. Uh, 
mm -hmm. like so. And then now F can take the X and the Y. And good job, induce types checks. And now we are on to our further problem. And given that this looks very similar, I am going to start replacing things in a kind of similar way, which is like this should probably be UG uh, vertex. And now simple um, takes uh, G overlay and G connect. So it's a little bit like our K and simple here. Um, well, apparently it takes all of the same G. Uh, so let's type check this and see what's up. Apparently vertex is not, oh yeah, of course it's not because you probably just want to say uh, that this takes, uh, well, it takes an A and it returns U, G, G, vertex of A. Indeed. And here, however, we, that doesn't type check. Okay. So let's think further about uh, our types here. So we, we say simple, um, mm, yeah okay yeah i think uh, it's maybe simply that we need to do well maybe we need to do x y um hold on i'm tempted to say g u g g overlay here but we know that that's uh, that doesn't type check in the way that we want um we could just call overlay Maybe that will work actually and connect. And yes, type checks. Amazing. And so we go further. And now that's just something that's a difference between Haskell and, um, and PureScript because I imported the two relation from PureScript, but apparently we now have some trouble is we're trying to match two different relation types and that's because we do have two different relation types we have one from uh, r that we're importing here that we're importing from relation symmetric whereas i think two graph takes relation which uh so maybe if we just take r dot relation here but that depends a bit on yeah where what we want to do um so here we import R dot relation. I think we just want to say R dot relation here, and then maybe uh, maybe we just pattern match. Um, okay, maybe not. Let's see. We undirected and uh, algebra graph relation, algebra graph to graph, algebra graph undirected, and then we have uh, not that. We have uh, to graph here, right? Um, and to relation, and to relation is the one that comes from here. And it takes the R dot relation, and the R here is, is the symmetric. So arguably, then our two graph is going to need to be with the symmetric. So let's uh, do that except that when we try to pattern match with the symmetric i think we're going to need to do the sr to pattern match with the original relation i believe and we need to import the sr well maybe if we do r dot sr yeah and that uh, checks excellent so Let's go next. Uh, yeah, that looks exactly like uh, extremely similar to everything here. And you know what? I'm going to try a new pattern here. I'm going to try this because it could be that that just works. And it does. So maybe that's going to be a much more elegant way to actually do everything we've been doing here. I mean, not everything, but part of it. Uh, here though, here though, probably not. 
Um, yeah, probably not. So I'm going to leave that one alone for now. And let's go. Okay. EQ graph. Okay. Um, so which uh, which definition of 260 map am I using here? Probably the one in scope, which is this guy. And that guy takes a local graph. And uh, so there's really no reason to actually be kind of matching on A and B here on, on UG. We should be able to just do this. Indeed we are. And then let's go for the next one. And here I think, ah, yeah, here we're trying to do uh, the chorus thing, but we know it, we know we're not good at it, so we just use GGMT. It should work for us. And here, yeah, we know we need to do that little uh, bookkeeping, which is not great, but it just is life when you don't master higher order things. And that's fine, right? Yes, it is. And I feel like we're getting closer and closer. Uh, bind. Well, you know what? That's all probably going to work with this little trick there. And do does. And then pure probably also attacks. Oh, yeah. And then uh, out is just then going to be. Hmm. What is the type of. I, of uh, I think maybe overlay and empty should be fine. Yes, and we type check, we just have warnings now. That's pretty amazing. So does this mean we can run the test now? I mean, can we even build? We could if we installed all the things because now we're in Fusecript 14. So let's install all the things and let's build again. But yeah, it did say build succeeded, by the way. And um, but we don't need safe course or trans. We don't. Uh, oh yeah, we don't need a safe course anymore. That's true. So let's remove that. And apparently, no transformers quite yet. So do we have a clean build? We do. And so can we test? Um, I think we did a test actually already for um, for undirected graph indeed, and it actually. It actually does something, but the test doesn't pass. And let's just make sure. Yeah, we're importing UG, and UG is the undirected graph. So it runs, but apparently it doesn't do what I expect. So let's see more in detail what it doesn't do. So um, I was expecting that we'd get tuple ABF, which is, I, I think, what I have here on the right-hand side, but we get tuple AB. And that looks, you know, to be honest, very similar to what we had for the directed graph. So that tells me that we need agents, we need to take a look at agency list. Um, so let's go and take a look at agency list, adjacency list. And so what we do so far is we do two agents in CMAP. And uh, we pass that to AM agency C list, which is, I think, exactly what, um, what graphs do. And so the question is, is that enough for us? And how would we know? And so that might be dependent on our implementation of 4G. It could be that for the G, needs to uh, be a little bit smarter. Um, what would that mean, though? Because 4G expect either an, uh, a case for the empty graph, a case for the vertex, and then cases for overlays. And if we fold D over a uh, an undirected graph, When we overlay x, y, does this mean we need to overlay 
to also consider that we also need to do yx asymmetric somehow so i don't know Ah, let's look at what uh, Haskell does. Uh, full G. Well, I think the full G, the full G is actually in the instance. Uh, um, now if I just since a map of uh, UG, I believe, right? Um, no, SR. Don't we have UG here? Um, how do you call undirected graphs? Mm. How come you don't have them here? Ah, you, you have the instance uh, in line here. Is that what, happen what happens to a graph? Hmm. No, you just have full G here. Okay, so here it just courses G dot full G. Okay, so maybe we want to try the Haskell uh, library actually. Didn't we? I think we did last time, we did import the Haskell library for us to try uh, using Nix's superpower. Um, Alga. Uh, and how did we use Nix's superpower? Well, I think we did Cabal build, and so maybe we can do Cabal REPL here. I don't think we ended up using stack. And it looks decent some warnings here and there but there we go and so do we have the module everything in scope uh, i think it's yarrow we do and so but we want the undirected guy and so we need to just maybe import um algebra graph dot undirected as ug and then we need to do something like um, uh, like we create a graph and uh, let's create the the simple uh, graph with uh, an edge that the directed version would be a uh, maybe the the graph over booleans where true has an edge to false and false has an edge to true Hmm, I suppose then it also will help us answer the question of whether it's a multigraph, whether it shows two edges or, or just one. Because uh, undirected multigraph is, of course, different than undirected graph. Um, okay. Uh, so how do we do that? We say probably um, vertex, vert, uh, well, I kind of want to unload uh, things. How do we uh, unload already? Mm. Uh, da, da, da. Load the that, different type server, reload. Ah, maybe module minus. Module minus um, algebra.graph. And then if we browse, yeah, oh, well, we have, we have the UG. Oh yeah, that's, um, I think that's believably UG things. So that's better. Uh, how do we know whether it is a UG thing? We can say, we can create like a little vertex that would be uh, vertex true. Where is it true? I think it's true. Um, maybe we need true. Yes. And then ask for the type of view. And that's a graph bool. Which, if graph is graph, then it's all good, I suppose. 
Okay, so let's believe that and say that we will then, then, then uh, create an edge between V and V and that will overlay that with an edge. Well, no, sorry. Uh, edge of V and uh, vertex false. Uh, that's a bit, uh, that's not the prettiest, but it will do. And then uh, edge of vertex false to V. And the uh, type of G is, oh, a graph of graph ball. Oh yeah, yeah, of course, that's totally not what uh, needs to be happening. It's actually edge takes, uh, takes the payloads. So uh, that is that, and maybe we're going to be yelled at for reusing G, we are not. So that's good. So now what's the type of G? Graph ball, that's what we want. And can you actually, ah, so G, so it's not a multi-graph, I, I would surmise from this. And um, yeah, not a, oh, hold on. I, no, no, hold on. I'm overlaying instead of connecting here. Ah, there we go. Okay, whoa. Uh, so there's even like a, there's even an edge from false to false for some reason. Why? Oh yeah, because this fully connects everything. Yeah. Oh, so no, so my overlay was actually the right instinct, right? Because overlay should mean that I have a vertex true, a vertex false, and I'm overlaying one edge with the other edge. So that sounds uh, that sounds like uh, that sounds weird. Oh, and also actually this also so this is not a multigraph is my answer here I believe. Okay, so my tricks aren't going to work. Uh, although technically uh, what we're trying to reproduce with the um, the um, this graph that's not a multigraph either so maybe at this point we're happy with the undirected graph and then we'll work on multigraph next stream um, let's see whether uh, algebra graph has multi whoopsie multigraphs uh, the set I think I want it to be around um, uh, yeah 200 that's probably nice and uh, um, multi graph mm -hmm. so let's see whether actually the um, the github has some insights into whether people are considering multi graphs as part of this or not multi graph and they are This directly gives label multigraph. And yes, I can see how edge labels will allow that by using set as edge labels. So perfect. Uh, so it's not there yet, but we can do this and we can play with uh, undirected or directed multigraphs by using the labeled edges and we don't have labeled edges yet cool cool so my uh, i'm happy my understanding is correct and then also it should allow us to maybe next time because now it's getting a bit late but uh, get started on the um on the common ad but before i do is this could this be submitted um it might be the case. I mean, we let's uh, let's do a little bit of cleanup. Uh, we don't have fail. We have a couple of more um, apparently warnings there for deprecation. Uh, Monad and alternative instead. We do have Monad and alternative, so is that and how about? Okay, so maybe we're saying we don't need Monad zero. And then we can apply the suggestions. Yeah, looks like it. So maybe I'll just uh, also remove one at zero. How about that? 
uh, arguably all of these slightly different um, 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 commits, but we'll see whether we're clean uh, in our commits or not. Uh, custom wording, use data semi-group foldable for one. Okay, yeah, I'm happy to do that. So data semi-group foldable instead of data non empty foldable. Uh, data non empty foldable, okay, data semi-group foldable, boom. And then we apparently introduce some key. Yeah, because that's not ready to be submitted. Um, 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 so I will need to do a more um, targeted uh, commit for all this. And that has the context. And I think that this is where uh, we can probably, well, you know what? I, I just simply don't uh, need to commit that. That's fine. And then we do the same thing in terms of monad zero and in terms of fold out. And the data semi group um, instead of non empty, data semi group foldable. And we also still have a key thing here, but I'm happy with that. And then let's try and be smart about our commits here and our branch. Okay, we're in main. Okay, so let's check out. Um, Undirected, and let's also see whether we have a, a string fork. We do not, so let's create one. And let's uh, add that remote as fork. And then uh, let's start being smart about what we commit. So I suppose this didn't, I know it did have the package dot Oh, but I, I started to um, uh, up, yeah, I upgraded to the latest Pure script. I suppose that's totally fine. So let's start with that. Um, uh, let's start with that, but let's uh, just remove this for now. I mean, for now, forever. And let's start with the package blah. Yes, so you can go there. You, uh, shell.nix, not needed as a contribution. This, very good. And then settings.json, what is this? Okay, that has nothing to do with anything. Uh, so I don't need to submit it. And so, okay. Um, I then commit that as uh, upgrade to your script 014. Cool. Um, mm, oh, main has. I did something bad, didn't I? I'm not sure what I did. I think I clicked the thing. Uh oh, clicky, clicky. Um, no, it looks fine. It looks fine. Cool. Um, okay, so we remove main. which is fine. And we add a test main. And we can totally do that, but we'll have to also remove the undirected graph test for now. So let's simply unstage the range. Okay, but no, I didn't want to. Okay, uh, 
I need to restage the deletion. Can I do that? Um, not uh, trivially. Um, can I unstage just this thing? That doesn't seem to be working. Oh no, hold on. That removes log and uh, adds all the rest. So yeah, no, it's all it's all good. It's all good, and supposedly the trudel pass the test, but uh, so let's just commit that. Um, um, uh, tests. And then um, then we remove uh, ah yeah, I can't uh, I can't stage this thing. I don't want to stage this thing, but I'm okay staging um, those little entries. Actually, arguably, oh, control commoner. Mm, I don't need control commoner for now. I need a uh, control monad, uh, yeah, this monad plus thing. Stage this. And then stage this. And stage this. Okay, uh, I think that's the extent of um, of what we want at this point from um, from graph itself, and then. Uh, should I separate this one? Yeah, I suppose I'll separate this one. I'll just uh, do a uh, git commit. Um, um, remove deprecation, re remove, uh, uh, replace deprecated monad zero and um, the moment t for that one. It is for the L1, right? For the L1, yeah. Okay. And then, so hold on, that, that was staged, right? So where are we now? Oh, I, did I not add those? That, is that the. Hmm, hold on. No, no, yeah, it's all good. Okay. And now, um, well, I'm actually not going to add the the commonad class because that's for our future work. Um, but I'm going to add relation and undirected. Except in undirected, I'm also not going to get all of our commonad related things. So I'm going to stage that. And then I think I'm going to need to unstage the commonad here. And then I'm going to stage relation and undirected, that's fine. I'm going to stage re symmetric. And then, uh, well, maybe I'll make the test passing. How about that? I think that would be a neat little thing to do with uh, undirected for now. I think because the expectation, um, well, no, I think, I think undirected is arguably not properly tested yet. Um, so I'll make that a work in progress PR, I think, because that's not a multigraph. That's A being wired to both B and F. So the fact that this doesn't pass is actually is actually information. So let's uh, let's uh, let's add the test. So. Um, no, let's not add the test. Let's first um, let's first add the implementation. Git commit um, implement uh, undirected graphs, 
and then uh, add the uh, main test that is a failing test uh, git commit add um, test for add a currently failing test for undirected graphs and then let's push this to our fork and submit a draft pull request Hi there, I started uh, working on porting the undirected module from Alga. Uh, the, um, with some failing tests for now. Um, um, That's it, and I created a pull request. And we have CI here. I expect to check. Is that CI? There's CI. Uh, but we'll need to make the CI run on 014. So let's uh, do that. Let's be nice. Um, set up your script for main. You know what? That could actually be. Uh, the right version it depends a bit on. I don't know or I don't know what it would depend on. Uh, work for waiting approval. Yeah, show me the workflow. Where is it? Why can't I see the little bleep? It should be in checks, actually, no? CI, yeah. Oh, oh waiting for approval and maintainer. OK. Um, Okay, that's fine. So that's uh, that's what uh, we'll do. And hold on, I, I can uh, pat myself in the back from having submitted my contribution to Alga. Oh yeah, so we can check that guy. And we've started implementing uh, implemented a directed graph. You know, I say we've implemented them; they're just not working. <laughs> so fix tests uh, is going to be our next thing. Um, and then maybe while well, we've pushed it, so uh, are pushing it to pursue to have docs, that could be a thing. Uh, that's not as uh, uh, not as urgent as fixing tests. And then maybe uh, common ad will follow um, in whatever order with the docs. So there's progress. Um, hope you've enjoyed. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, have a lovely weekend and see you on Tuesday for more. Uh, RGB graphs, commonads, and JavaScript. Bye bye.